Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel if you're new here. My name is Death by Pony. Today we're hopping back into our life. So without further ado, let's hop in. Who drinks? It was late enough in the day that you were surprised to hear a knock on the door, seeing who was waiting on the other side only doubled the surprise. Good evening, James. I've returned from my journey. Baxter smiled warmly like it was still the middle of the afternoon. Your confusion must have been written all over your face. He laughed as if he could read your thoughts. It was almost a week ago that you found Baxter in the exact same spot. He spun a tale about how he put in place some plans to visit old acquaintance in Northern California after his parents had told him they were sending him to Sunset Bird. Baxter assumed he'd be being in the same state meant that he was reasonably close for a visit, but he learned the hard way how daunting it would be to drive himself to the opposite end of California. Before he left, Baxter ended the conversation with a promise on his return he would tell you of the arrival in person, and there he was, true to his word. Nice to see you. It's lovely to see you again. I feel I've been away for an age. The arrangement had seemed like a stroke of brilliance, adding more adventure to my stay in the state, and assured myself I'd see a friendly face at least once in the season. Yet, truthfully, I wouldn't have promised such a lengthy trip away from town if I had known my, uh, who my neighbor was going to be. As pleasant as they were, my parents' friends are not as good as my own. I miss you. I hope you still had fun. Wow, I'm so flattered, you tease. You know, I don't mind if you have other things rather to do sometimes. You blush and like the way you smiled. I missed you. <laughs> Stunned Baxter stopped talking. You'd beat him to the punch, uh, but his surprise quickly morphed into pure delight. I missed you. I missed you as well. Before anything else, he let Baxter actually come in. He cordially joined you in the living room, family living room. With the greetings and pleasantries all done and the invitation to talk extended, he got right to the point as he would have expected from him. I hope I'm him. not being too forward. But I would like to spend more time with you. Uh, and obviously this tentative visit would be based on your own schedule. It'd be ghastly if I expected you to drop everything simply because I've only now made myself available. Whenever work best... Whenever works best for you, I will accommodate accordingly. It is late today, so I don't expect that, but I am entirely free tomorrow. We must have arranged the forces of fate because our schedules keep clashing. You gave a deep huff of discontent. Baxter's smile faltered. Tomorrow I'm spending the afternoon visiting family. I don't think I'll be home until pretty late, but we could do something in the morning as long as you don't mind it being kind of short. Baxter's eyes widened for an inexplicable reason. You thought your suggestion was a good compromise. The look on his face changed. It was strange. It was a problem, certainly. But if he was free, and so were you, what could have been that much of a roadblock? We can hang out some other day if that's not what you had in mind. His expression shifted again, and not for the better. Whatever caught him off guard was in the first place. It was nothing in comparison. Baxter was getting even more perturbed. Man, even when he's like upset looking, he still looks cute like a sad puppy. All right, sad puppy, let's go. <sighs> um, and just as quickly, Baxter snapped out of it. He released a steady breath and regained as much of his usual relaxed composure with the next I inhale. Apologize. Forgive me for being distracted. Your idea is perfectly manageable, more than that, in fact. I'd prefer if we didn't put things off to another day. How about we go to a cafe and get coffee or tea, whichever drink you prefer. I've been, I've seen some very nice ones when I've been out exploring the area, but I haven't patronized any of them yet. Deal. That'd be great. Excellent. Tomorrow morning it is then. It was always going to be a busy day, but at least now tomorrow had an added dash of excitement. The anticipation was mutual and Baxter's tone sweetened. You got all the details squared away. Baxter volunteered to play driver for the short trip and you planned to drop by his house in the morning once you'd gotten ready. When that was settled, there was nothing left to do other than to say your goodbyes for the night. Baxter politely dipped his head. Bye, have a good night. Goodbye for today. As well, see you soon, James. He, As he turned to go, both of you found little ways to stretch the seconds lingering for as long as you could. Then he was gone. The rest of the night passed pleasantly. You, your thoughts wandered along all the fun paths could unfold tomorrow. The next morning, you were up and out the door like a whirlwind. 
Your eyes were set on your goal as you went up the hill and across the street to Baxter's condo. Knocking on the door, you tried to guess that the cafe Baxter had in mind. He'd mentioned before that there were a few that caught his eye, but you weren't sure what that meant exactly. Your growing curiosity wouldn't have to wait much longer. Or maybe it would as soon as you stood in front of Baxter's shut condo, you gradually realized it was taking quite a while for him to answer the door, much more than normal. Licking your head swiveled as you double-checked your own sanity that you had the right house. You did, but Baxter was still nowhere to be seen. You rang the doorbell next. A couple of minutes passed, and finally you began to hear a faint clattering inside the house. The door pulled open a crack, and it was just barely enough to see Baxter on the other side. <laughs> Wearing half lidded days, not his usual outfit, that was for sure. Hey there, Baxter, you okay? He yawned loudly, and then shuggishly followed your line of sight to look down at himself. He frowned the second it clicked that he wasn't dressed for the event. You guessed those were his pajamas. I deeply apologize, James. I will need an additional moment before we can leave. I'm running late, it seems. As he shut the door, you were left there in his doorstep entirely at a loss. His bizarre behavior was unexplainable, at least for the second it took for your brain to completely process what had happened. It dawned on you that this was the first time you'd actually seen Baxter before noon, and how that might not be a random coincidence. He wasn't a morning person. Suddenly, the door flung all the way open, nearly knocking you backwards. Baxter was back, and this time he got a full view. Baxter was indeed wearing only his pajamas, black and white PJs, of course. Excuse me, that was rather impolite. You couldn't tell by the tone of his voice, which was incidentally he was even referring to. Shutting the door in your face, or the way the situation was dragged on forever, it was hard to know. But Baxter moved aside enough that you could pass by. Why don't you come in? You went inside the entryway and into the living room. At that point, you were more concerned about Baxter safely navigating his own home than you were about even making it to the cafe. You paused to take in the space and unable to help yourself after all those years trying to avoid this condo. You were actually inside. Honestly, you never thought that would happen. As much as you wanted to explore, there were even more unexpected things taking precedence. Your attention returned to Baxter. He closed the door and, follow, and followed behind. Baxter pinched the bridge of his nose between his thumbs and forefingers as his feet dragged. Please do take a seat. I'm sorry for not being prepared. I sent an alarm for an hour ago, and I know I heard it go off. <sighs> Somehow, in a matter of moments, that hour disappeared, and now you're here. I have a little doubt about your punctuality. He moved his hand to rub his forehead with his palm, if to catch the memories lost inside. You didn't rush him, instead of settling yourself in a chair. I don't know how this could have possibly happened. It's... Baxter's word became too mumbled and faint to understand. That brought your gaze back to him directly. And you got an eyeful of his fully exposed stomach. Baxter was in the process taking his shirt off over his head. But in his groggy state, the material had gotten caught on his ears. Uh, Baxter, uh, maybe don't. Do that here, you yelled. You sniggered quietly. Unbothered, you waited for him to finish. You silently flushed. Yes. You had no idea how to act in this situation, especially since Baxter wasn't completely aware that what he was doing. Embarrassed, you hid your face in your hands and waited for it to be over. But you still peeked through your fingers when you realized it was worse not knowing what was happening. Baxter readjusted his shirt after failing to get it off, working through the tiredness to conceptualize a plan B. Then he hazily met your eyes. Baxter held for several Heartbeats and then his brows bent up. Did something happened? Your blush burned hotter, thoughting you kept yourself hidden. Are you okay? What's wrong? You shook your head and the situation gradually dawned on Baxter. He glanced down in his wrinkled oh. clothes. Oh no, that's not correct. I'm sorry. I'm used to living with doormates. They don't care about that sort of behavior. I've lost my manners. I'll go change properly in my room. Please stay here. I'll be back in two shakes. And with that, the situation was out of your hand. But what if? Now we need to know. Uh, we'll wait for him to finish. This was easily the last thing you ever expected from somebody normally so formal. But you couldn't be surprised either. Baxter was moving on sleepy autopilot. A flawed one, two. A flawed one, two. Struggling to his feet to free his face from his shirt. And before you could ask him if he wanted any help, Baxter let go fabric go. He readjusted it comfortably back on his body, uh, working through the tiredness of conceptualized plan B, then squinted at you confused. He followed your line of sight to his wrinkled oh. clothes. Oh, that's not correct. I'm sorry. I'm used to living with doormates. They don't care 
about that sort of behavior. I've lost my manners. I'll go change properly in my room. There's no harm done. I really don't mind. No, no. He waved his hand, dismissing your notion completely. He sighed deeply, still seemingly absent-mindedly. You're my guest, and I'm being terribly rude. Please stay here. I'll be back in two shakes. With that, the situation was out of your hands. You watched him fumble his way through the room. Baxter made it upstairs, and the slam of the door sent the house rattling. The following dead silence only lasted a split second. Sorry. His voice rang from what you assumed was his bedroom. Next words were clear. He must have opened the door again to speak. Didn't mean to do that at all. That's okay. I think I pulled the door too hard. No problem. That happens. I swear the noise was completely unintentional. He didn't add anything else after that. He remained where he had left you in a rapid growing state of disbelief. To put it nicely, Baxter was a total mess and somehow the universe deemed you worthy of having a front row seat. It's kind of funny to know he wasn't always so poised. The whole thing was hilarious. He felt bad about bothering him. Clearly bad time. It was extremely cute. You're annoyed he couldn't get his act together. It's adorable. Despite it not being Baxter's ideal part of the day, he was still trying hard to make it work. That consideration must, consideration and intent means a lot. And <laughs> the bedhead pajamas, rocky silliness was an added bonus that you were going to treasure. After a few minutes, the clumsy bumping around upstairs faded. Uh, part of you considered the chances of whether or not he had fallen asleep somewhere, but that sound of careful footsteps soon banished the thought. Baxter returned downstairs and properly dressed as well. He drifted his fingers along the button of a shirt, double checking that everything was in order. Hello. Hello, I am here I am. Good morning. You were pleasantly surprised to see him already. Hopefully he was actually doing as well as he was trying to. Morning, sleepyhead. I can't emphasize this enough. Thank you so much for your patience. I apologize for that unnecessary bump in our plans. Baxter graciously moved beyond um uh, his earlier antics if you hadn't witnessed it firsthand you probably wouldn't have believed it even happened the man is cute so we can excuse it though as you observed him more and more you noted the signs he hadn't erased all evidence a few minutes ago yet if you knew what to look if you knew to look for it his usual pristine and delivery put together outfit was pulled and tucked in the wrong places there were even wrinkles. <laughs> I was going to say, is this shirt on backwards? But I saw the buttons. Baxter turned his head in an attempt to suppress a yawn. And there was a dull edge that his entire demeanor. He had not quite reached his usual razor sharp wit yet. That's all right. You still quietly enjoyed his soft easygoing state of Baxter. You're welcome. Are you really all right? You don't have to do this. So you're not a morning person. It really wasn't any trouble. You smiled reassuringly. So you're not a morning person. You'd be correct. He let his gaze fall away somewhere beside frowning. I am the furthest thing from being a morning person these days. Good to know, Night Owl. But then his smile slipped and you could see Baxter's guilt surfacing. I should admit directly that mornings are, as you might have surmised, a challenge. It wasn't always this I way. Swear. I swear the older I get, the more early hours become a chore. I got up at dawn for school for years but college allowed me to actively avoid morning classes altogether now i can't even remember the last time i had an occasion to be out before 11 at the earliest baxter rubbed the back of his neck his frustration with himself was palpable seriously you don't need to feel bad some people are built that way nevertheless it's jarring to be entirely lost for a specific chunk of the day i, expe I expected i would have a rough start but i never thought i'd handle the occasion this poorly i certainly would have made better choices if i knew this was the site i'd be showing you the intensity in his voice was gradually lessened until finally until the final part was delivered quietly he couldn't even look at you as he muttered oh he's just embarrassed but but if you're still interested i would be thrilled to go and have our charming cafe breakfast We'd be ashamed to miss out on the chance. Okay, of course I'm interested. You nodded. I'd like that. But if I'm driving, would it be all right if I drove your car? I'm not as tired. Okay. Okay, wonderful. A wave of relief smoothed out worry from his brow. It was sweet and pulled a quiet chuckle from you. 
Baxter's feet scuffed over the ground as he followed you out of the condo. He simply shut the front door before walking into the street. Hey, Baxter, you might want to lock that. Uh, did you forget to lock the door? He shrugged it off. There was nothing else to do after that. Cove didn't lock his door either. They had that in common. Uh, you couldn't believe he was about to leave the neighborhood like that. Well, with normal Baxter, you, you couldn't believe it. It made perfect sense with morning Baxter. Baxter paused, his face scrunched up in confusion. You pointed out Fondo. He followed the motion, peering over uh -huh. his shoulders. Ah, good catch. Thank you. He waited by the car, and he hurried back from what you could observe. Baxter didn't need any more help locking the front door this time. Though, he hesitantly glanced in your direction before he moved, and you gave him a thumbs up. Baxter rejoined you on the road. And while he might have been living in a daze, when Baxter was standing at the driver's side of his car, you could see his focus sharpen. This was a task that neither of you wished him to fail. He unlocked the vehicle's side and slid inside. You climbed into the other side. Baxter seemed to be in a better control of himself by the second. His seatbelt clicked into the place with perfect poise. When you were both ready, Baxter promptly brought the direction, brought up the directions to the cafe. Here we are. Sighing contentedly, you leaned in your seat and soaked in the morning sun coming in through the window. You were optimistic that the outing was going to be great. Uh, the drive wasn't long at all and no issues came along. It was smooth sailing. You hopped out and the scent wafted from the cafe were enough to pull you towards the propped open front door. Oh my god, look at this place. Look at all the little bread. It's like Panera. Or Starbucks, really. But this is fancy Starbucks. I don't know. Okay, so firstly, I don't drink coffee. So, uh, my experience with coffee shops and things is very limited. So, to me, everything looks like Starbucks. Okay? And so, you just have to live with that. Once you were inside the intermingled smells became easier to decipher chocolate cinnamon bacon eggs and most especially coffee there wasn't so there was something about that particular brew of coffee that immediately reminded you of your parents the two of them loved to have long easy mornings in the kitchen with mugs of coffee between them on the counter they might be doing that at home this very minute before you could tug on that thread of thought further a waiter passed by carrying a sliced quiche you breathed deeply uh picking out the various ingredients before your eyes could confirm it. It looked impressively made. Baxter led you towards the showcase. There was even added basket of bread on the other and other treats there. Every inch of the space was fully stocked with options. Hilly coming early had its advantages. Whether you ate anything or not, or not, they, this sight was delightful. There was a charm to how they presented the fresh pastries. That was the word he'd used when pitching the place charming baxter was right on the money there it was a pleasant little cafe with comfortably quiet atmosphere though it was a bit more formal than the typical coffee joint you could couldn't sit anywhere or order at the front a member of wait staff needed to seat and serve you you found that detail to be baxter's thing it was absolutely him to choose a sit-down restaurant even for a casual breakfast a server came over and gestured for you to follow through the room she broke she brought you to a shiny two-seater table and passed out the menus welcome i'll bring some water but if there's anything else you'd like to drink i can put in the order now or you can take some time to think about it you'd be a lifesaver if you brought me a black coffee please uh i like hot coffee iced coffee americano latte cappuccino espresso frappe cup of hot tea i see hot chocolate Glass of milk, glass of juice. Actually, never mind. I like a frappe. Gotcha. Um, so, when I do go to Starbucks, I get the caramel frappuccino, and that's about all I get there. Or if they have seasonal drinks, and I can drink them, because I have. I can't do almonds. So, when they have almond milk and things, my anxiety is too bad to be like, hey, can you use a different milk? Gotcha. I'll get that right out. Just relax and browse the menu, and you're welcome to take a peek at the front and see what baked goods we have prepared today she clicked her pen closed and then left the two left you two alone baxter sunk in his seat slinging one arm over the back because 
Eyelids fell heavily closed, but his smile remained serenely in no. place. Please order your heart's content, whatever your fancy, but don't be alarmed that I don't have much of an appetite in comparison. Coffee is all I need this morning. I get that. Of course, you'd only want black coffee. Are you sure you don't even want a little bite to eat? Well, so much for us getting breakfast together, you tease. I wasn't planning on anything either. You quietly browse the menu. I get that. My mom doesn't eat breakfast, so that's kind of a normal thing for me. It's still pretty early. Mm, it is. You weren't entirely sure if you were going to order anything yet. It was a deliberation you had with yourself while Baxter took a break. Luckily for you, the cafe's layout was open enough you could observe the glass case in front of the front from the comfort of your seat. You'd pass the time comparing what was printed on the menu to the real life displays. Soon enough, the waitress was on her way back to your table. She passed out two waters and then placed a white cup filled with richly colored coffee in front of Baxter and a frappe Perfect. by you. Perfect. Are either of you ready to order? I'm taking care of. Thank you. I like some food. Present food and one of those pastries. Everything you'd seen so far smelled delicious. And after reading through the menu, how could you resist getting some goodies to sink your teeth into? The waitress smiled t attentively and readied her pen. I'm all ears. I like uh, egg plate, egg sandwich, quiche, lunch meat sandwich, hummus and vegetables, panini, breakfast burrito, a bowl of oatmeal, a smoothie, a bowl of soup, a salad. I am a breakfast burrito person and I'd like... Uh, croissant, a piece of coffee cake, a muffin, a slice of banana bread, Danish cheese, uh, fruit Danish, a cinnamon roll, scone, cookie, piece of cake, piece of pie, a cup of bread pudding, a bear claw. I fucking love bear claws. A great choice that sounds real yummy. Well, get those menus out of your way and then I'll be back soon with your order. Uh, she scooped up the menus and walked away, dropping them off at the front stand before disappearing into the kitchen. Baxter shifted his attention no. to you. That sounds like a lovely breakfast. I'm pleased there were a variety of things that piqued your interest. Another long, wide yawn forcefully derailed Baxter's train of thought. He politely... Ooh, I could be yawn. Ugh. Politely tried to shield you from the image by covering his mouth. What a polite man. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, remember to hit like. That way I know you're enjoying the videos and make me to subscribe. That way YouTube brings you back here to see what's next. I won't take up any more of your time. Have a good day, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.